Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm kind of doing like a, like a care video about my box turtles. So, in here we have Steve, my very first pet that I ever had, if you don't count dogs. So, he is in a 40 gallon lawn, and kind of, we, we try to make these cages as naturalistic as possible. So, as a substrate, we start off with just organic topsoil and mulch, because it's really good for plants. Because in all of our box turtle cages, all these plants are natural. And I'll get a close up shot of that here in a second. And we just use like, rocks from outside that we wash off and clean. So, I'm going to address the number one thing that you guys are probably noticing. How low these heat lamps are. So, typically I would never recommend putting the lamps this low, but it is a very low wattage heat bulb. And, he likes it. He's always um, hanging out under that. And we're just trying to heat up this space, especially with an open top. It just lets a lot of heat and humidity out. So, having it kind of low, like he can go in there if he wants, and then pretty much everywhere else is kind of like a cool spot. And we have a cool hide over here, and we have the plants over here as kind of like the warm hide. And then this is UVB. We have a UVB bulb, as apparent by the dome. So UVB bulbs aren't necessarily the best for UVB. They're only really good within like a 6 to 7 inch distance. So this is actually the perfect distance for it to work. And since he's over there with the heat bulb already, He's kind of getting the UVB, and then he will alternate spots and get the UVB on his own. And then this bulb up here, obviously it's not as low down. That's simply for the plants. But as I mentioned before, they're all live plants. Do I have any clue what any of them are? Absolutely not. I'm pretty confident this is a fern. My dad knows more about plants than I do. So, with these turtles, my box turtles love to dig. So what we do is every single plant in here is still in his pot. Because we would put it in there and then they would just dig and dig and dig and destroy the root system and the plant would just die. And we were just spending a lot of money on plants for them to just die. There was no point doing that. By keeping them in the pots, they dig and kind of bump into the uh, plastic pot and just kind of leave it alone. So a good thing about some of those other plants dying and us taking them out of the pot is that we were able to use those pots for other purposes. So back there, I'll get another shot of that. But we just have a flower pot that we covered in more dirt and mulch and then took the log and leaned it up against it. So it looks natural, but if you get up close, you can really see that it's just a flower pot. This is another way we're saving money in there, and the turtles love it. Actually, right behind me, Gracie has been chilling out in hers after we put some strawberries in there. So the next very important thing about box turtle care is the diet. That's really the most important thing about keeping any animal. So we feed ours superworms, crickets, roaches, uh, huge variety of fruits and vegetables. So what's kind of interesting about box turtles is that like as they grow older their diet changes. When they're younger they have more like a protein based diet, more insects, earthworms, things like that. And kind of build up the protein so they can grow and not be as small and vulnerable to predators. So as they grow older they really don't need to worry about growing or having as much protein. They still will get protein, they'll still eat insects and stuff like that but they'll kind of go to more, like a more plant-based diet, more um, like grasses and uh, mosses, stuff like that in the wild. And like all of our animals, well, Steve's kind of temperamental about it. He's, like he has some weeks where he likes them, other weeks where he doesn't. But like lettuce and strawberries and apple slices and carrots, like things like that. And I also do supplement their diet with uh, pinky mice every once in a while. Uh, I've been doing that every about uh, once a month or so and with these guys they're getting into the size where like a pinky mouse is not too much anymore I probably need to upgrade to like a not, not a weaned, whatever the next size is from a pinky but I actually have Yurl chilling down here because I had her walking around but she's pretty close to a full grown box turtle Yurtle here is a three-toed box turtle, and Steve and Gracie are both eastern box turtles. But, like, a pinky to her just perfectly fits in her mouth. It's not even, it's just a, a tiny snack. It's like you, you eating, like, one cheese it. And that's, that could fill you up? Absolutely not. It's just kind of a little something. I'm going to go put her back in the towel that she's chilling in. 
hope that she doesn't run away again. So another thing that I completely forgot about the substrate is that we have earthworms and springtails and isopods in there. Yep, Yertle's totally running away underneath the camera right now. But we have all those um, in the enclosure and it's kind of unfortunate because the turtles would dig them up and um, eat the isopods or eat the earthworms. But I don't really care about that, it's just kind of natural, like that's what they'll eat in the wild so I really don't stop it. I just, I can always put more isopods in or always put more earthworms in there. But they kind of help like, with root systems like, like they would in the wild to kind of dig holes and help um, like break up the soil for plants to grow better. Kind of the same thing they're doing there and the isopods and springtails are breaking down like the decaying leaves and fecal matter and the other bits and pieces of fruits and vegetables that we miss during like spot cleaning. Like sometimes I'll be digging around in the dirt and I'll find the part of a strawberry. Like it happens and like you always miss something. So it's always breaking down. It's kind of food for them. So it's not too big of a deal in these box turtle cages. So let me show you guys a kind of a close up of the cage. So I you know, just look at the same shot of me talking the entire time. So here's the close up of Steve's cage. Pardon the uh, dirty glass. I cleaned it like yesterday and somehow it's dirty already. But here's Steve. He is my only male box turtle. This dirty glass is really irritating me right now. But you can kind of tell he's a male because he is, has red eyes. And also, if I do this, you can see his uh, curved, I think it's the plastron. I'm going to have to Google that. All right, I just Googled it, and it was indeed the plastron. So he has that little dent in there. That helps him get on top of a female when he's mating in the future. Let's hope he doesn't do that for a while because I don't need any more box turtles as much as I love them. So we can kind of see like this plant here is dying a little bit so we just trim that up and put it in the soil for the springtails and the isopods. And here we have the log that I was talking about and then if I can sink the camera down in here you can see it's just a flower pot with some moss and some dirt on top of it. And it works great, they love it in there. And then here's the fern. Um, we're having really bad luck for a while on these plants because we do have a window up in there that was providing sunlight to these and some of them would do good. But ever since we added these light bulbs to it, these plants did amazing. They're growing so well. And then I'm looking down, I'm noticing the food bowl here. It's kind of stained with some like calcium powder that falls off the food. But once a week I do supplement their food with calcium powder. And it's always another thing to look out for. So I'm not going to bug Steve anymore because he's not a huge fan of handling. I move over here to Gracie. Another cage where I cleaned it yesterday and it's magically dirty already. Maybe I didn't like, have the paper towel clean enough and just kind of left water spots or something. I don't know. Definitely need to clean the food out of this one. Uh, this one's um, alive enough. I might just bury that for the isopods, but that little dried apple piece I need to take back out. Hers I love the most. I mean, she does have some dead leaves and stuff. Again, I'll just probably break that off. And She tore some of the ferns off. She's currently back in her cave, if I can even get an angle in there. I would see if it there's a message popped up on the camera. So let's try to scoot it in there. That is not working at all. But try to get a little view of her enclosure here from I guess her point of view. But kind of the same thing with her enclosure. UVB, a uh, low wattage heat bulb, plant light, and I'm pretty sure there's pothos or something over here. Pretty compass pothos. But these plants have done so well in this enclosure. We're really just doing the bare minimum of like plant care. We water them, they're in uh, pots, and we have a plant light in a window. That's really all we're doing. And they're doing so well. So Gracie, as I mentioned before, is my female Eastern box turtle. That actually both Gracie and Steve over there were in my very first video ever on my channel. Don't recommend watching it because my voice was so squeaky and terrible. But I'm gonna stand up, move over here to Yertle's cage. Yertle always loves to put on a show for people. She's always 
is up in front and super active and attentive. So we have some more live plants in here. Another cave. Uh, her fern has not gotten quite as big yet because she has, like we added the plant bulb to her cage last. So it uh, hasn't had enough time to grow. But this was just the wind, barely amount of like window light that I was getting was doing great. And again, low wattage heat bulb and the UVB bulb. And she's always hanging out right there. And I, the, the food bowl, I need to fix that because she was digging it out and she's going to try to bite my finger. Yep. She's always hungry. No matter what, how, or no matter how much we feed her, she always is just hungry. And then as I mentioned in my zoo tour, um, we, those two kind of go into a brumation during the winter and she does not. So she has grown so much over the winter that the other turtles have not. And I mentioned before that we have natural rocks in here. We have a rock there and under every single uh, water bowl we have rocks under those so that they can't dig it uh, dig up under the water bowl and kind of tip it over because we didn't do that before and then Steve would always dig under it and just create a giant mess I'm trying to think of anything else I'm missing oh yeah kind of like some like health things so I'm going to pull her out again I'm sorry Yertle you were just out so I got Yertle from another uh, owner Part of the floor. I wasn't really planning on putting her there. But oh, this lighting is terrible. Let me try to find a better place. Alright, we were putting her here, right next to Steve's cage. So you can kind of see that a little bit of like the scales here are a bit roughed up. That is a sign that of early on that she didn't get enough UVB. So the if I'm not mistaken, the previous owner didn't have a heat or UVB on her and gave her a diet of pretty much only earthworms. So, she wasn't getting a proper diet, and she wasn't getting proper lighting or anything. And she has gotten better since then, and she hasn't really so shown any other issues of, like, being, like, sick or, um, like, prop improperly developed in any way other than the scales here. But when I brought her in, that's the first thing I noticed. Probably, like, every two or three days, we take them outside, just kind of let them roam the yard and explore. Cause, but we have a decent sized yard and it allows them to explore and everything. And then sometimes we have our dog out there. It's, and we have a small dog. And I think she's like, yay high. She's really small. We have no clue what breed she is. But she's always super fascinating on the turtles and she's actually kind of scared of them. Like she was, you can't even see Steve because he's back there somewhere. But, um, she was looking at Steve and Gracie when they're outside one time, and then Steve started walking toward her, and she just went off running. So, if anything, the, the turtles are more bold than she is. But it's kind of interesting that they get to interact with a different animal that's not just another turtle, considering turtles are kind of solitary anyway, and any animal bigger than them is usually trying to eat them. So, it's just interesting to have them outside. They just kind of let them go. Always watch them, though, because, again, they have animals, and we don't want them getting lost or get through the fence or whatever. What is she even doing over there? What she loves to do is to get up on the glass here and start begging. Which is really interesting. Steve used to beg when he was younger, but he really doesn't now. But Yertle begs all the time. She begs worse than my dogs, and my dogs are terrible. I believe I covered it all. I rinsed it for a little bit, but I do that a lot. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Now my dad's coming in. So thank you guys so much for watching this kind of like, uh, like how-to video with my turtles. I didn't show you guys too much, but kind of gave you guys an idea because I hey, didn't want to take a part in the cage today. Because this room is really hot today because it's like 80 something degrees outside. So we need to start turning some of these lamps off because it's going to get too hot for them. And I just didn't feel like taking a part of the cage today. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I as always, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.